In this video, we'll write the Lewis structure for K2O, potassium oxide. Potassium, K, that's a metal, and then oxygen's a nonmetal. So when we have a metal and a nonmetal, we have an ionic compound. And the metal will transfer valence electrons to the nonmetal. So let's write the oxygen in the middle and put a potassium on either side. Potassium is in group one. That means it has one valence electron. So let's put one valence electron next to each potassium. And then oxygen is in group 16, sometimes called 6A. It has six valence electrons. So let's put those around the oxygen. We said the metal would transfer a valence electron to the nonmetal. So the potassium transfer one valence electron here. And when it does that, it's lost a valence electron. Since electrons are negative, that means it's going to have one plus charge. The other potassium here will transfer its valence electron to the oxygen, and then it has a plus charge as well. The oxygen has gained two valence electrons, and in doing so, it now has an octet, eight valence electrons. This is considered a full outer shell. Because it's gained two electrons and electrons are negative, it now has a two minus charge. The pluses and the minuses here, those attract, and that's what makes the ionic bond. Let's put brackets around the oxygen here, and you'll often see brackets around the positive ion. And that makes this the Lewis structure for K2O, potassium oxide. Do note that this is what's called a formula unit. Potassium oxide, that's normally a crystal. And in that crystal, we have a bunch of these formula units in a repeating pattern. This is Dr. B with the Lewis structure for K2O, potassium oxide, and thanks for watching.